Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And before I get this video started, I just want to make the disclaimer again. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a stock broker. I am just speaking on the article and giving it my opinion. So the title of the article in today's video, Does Verizon Have a Debt Problem? Yes. Does AT&T have a debt problem? Yes. And I wanted to speak on the differences between the two companies and why each of the companies' debt has a different meaning. And then I'll also speak on T-Mobile and their debt. So Verizon currently, as it stands, has a balanced debt on their balance sheet of $129 billion. at and is at about $157 billion. Why are both companies balance sheets different from each other so verizon is getting ready to get into more debt on top of that 129 billion i predict once c-band is official and we know exactly what verizon spent i think their debt is going to inch closer to um to at ts debt they're going to be very similar companies in debt on the balance sheet. And I think that's that's concerning for for all parties involved. I think in, investors are going to raise a red flag on both. And I think that will only accelerate uh, into the future. It's it's very both companies are very lucrative at this point. It's it's hard for them to adjust any pricing as we've seen with AT&T, they adjusted pricing, boom, EBITDA is down. They made a market correction to compete and their EBITDA and ARPU are down within one quarter. It just took one quarter and boom, the, the, the numbers are down. So Verizon chose to not make that type of market correction. Their numbers were down, but their service revenue is up. ARPU is up. So it it's really going to be very interesting how they move through 21. So they are estimated Verizon to spend between 40 to 45 billion anywhere in that in that range on C-band. That's going to drastically increase the debt for Verizon. Drastically. Likely more than even they anticipated. So now, as you see here, the, the telecom has a lot of debt and may take on more soon. That worries some investors. Rightfully so. So I wanted to kind of show you this graph and I'll leave this article in the description down below so you guys can check it out. Uh, I mean, not a graph, but I wanted to show you the numbers. And as you can see, there's a company, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile. The customer, I think that's off. AT&T total has way more customers if you include the, the, the connected cars. And so does Verizon as well. But what I wanted to focus on is the debt. So as you can see, Verizon 129.1 billion, AT&T 157.2 billion, T-Mobile after the Sprint merger 71.1 billion. Now what's what's so different about this debt? So AT&T's debt is far more considered to be normal based on the fact that they have so many other businesses involved in the company. So they bought DirecTV, they bought Time Warner, so they should have the most debt. They should have clearly across the board the most debt out of these three companies. But what's concerning for AT&T as well and its investors, if you look at the operating margin, it's way below Verizon's. And that is not good. Not good at all. That signals that AT&T ha has problems. And... You will see that here. You can see that AT&T has the most debt per customer, but it has a much bigger business than just wireless, which we all know they do media. They're heavily in, involved in that, and they do home internet, fiber, and broadband. So that number is higher for a reason, but it's worth noting that its margins are much lower than Verizon's. They're at levels of T-Mobile's, just keep that in mind, which should be concerning for investors in AT&T. 
so why is why, why is this important and why is this a big deal? So just to speak on T-Mobile for a second, T-Mobile has now after the merger, they now have better assets than both Verizon and AT&T. Their spectrum is deep. And after the fact that Verizon spends what they're going to spend on C-Band and AT&T is going to spend what they're going to spend on C-Band, T-Mobile will still be massively ahead on spectrum. You know, if you want to include millimeter wave, that's fine. Verizon is going to have the most overall total spectrum if you if you include millimeter wave. But if we are talking the mid-band holdings that potentially could give the carrier capacity at range, I mean, T-Mobile is going to have the most by far. And the fact that they are estimated to have invested and bid on the C-band auction is just going to drive that further. They are potentially, if you take away their low band, going to have 300 megahertz on average pure mid-band spectrum. That's what's guesstimated. Licensed. That's going to be theirs. 300 megahertz of pure mid-band spectrum without in incorporating the low band. That is a massive, massive, massive spectrum advantage. And their debt load is likely going to increase as well. I'm not saying it won't. But I don't think T-Mobile is going to be out here trying to buy Comcast or, or any big company and put themselves in that kind of uh, position. I don't think... I don't think T-Mobile is going to come out and say, hey, we're going to buy this company for $90 billion and then also go into a, you know, debt $150, $160 billion. They're not going to do that. I think the fact early that they're monetizing the, the anchor network already, which is what T-Mobile is building now, they're putting the N41 onto the T-Mobile sites. So they're building the anchor network to migrate the Sprint customer. The fact that they are monetizing it already is, is, a, is a big, big, big plus. They're already driving home internet. T-Vision is already being put in people's homes. Again, that's not, they've said it, I've said it, that is not going to be a big, huge profit driver for them. If they are not operating it at a loss, they are breaking even or they make very, very little profit on this. My prediction is they are they are they're not operating at a loss. I, I I don't believe that. I think they calculated it to where they make just a little bit of profit on each of the plans. But in the future, to make this competitive, they are going to have to add more channels. So they're going to have to add CBS and and I'm hearing people are saying they want NBA League Pass. So I think T-Mobile has to include that. But I think where they in what packages that they place those channels is going to be important. So say T-Mobile makes a little bit more profit on their higher end T-Vision package. That's likely where those those other channels will likely be because they're, they're going to have to pay a little bit more to get those channels, of course. So again, T-Mobile is likely the best positioned across the board. They aren't the best network yet and they aren't the largest network yet, but handling their debt, the spectrum that they got, the 5G that we're getting ready to get into, the next generation of wireless, T-Mobile is the best position across the board to handle its own debt because it's far lower and they have far bigger assets to monetize. So they can easily drive revenue and profits to, to a whole new level that the company has never seen as a standalone. And I think they will have better margins once the synergies are fully realized, we haven't even gotten to that yet. They're monetizing the anchor network already, and they haven't even fully realized the, 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 the synergies from the Sprint merger. They're still paying for decommissioning sites. They're still going to pay for store consolidations. That means breaking the leases of some of the stores. So they're still going to be between, I would say, an average range of 3 to $5 billion is what they're going to spend on that. This year, they already announced $3 billion. But I think they're going to have to invest some more of that next year as they work through integrating the back end and, and, and everything else. So they are going to spend. But once that's fully realized, the Sprint Network is completely off the balance sheet. They no longer have to pay rent or leases. 
this is going to be this is going to be a dangerous company if they do it correctly if they build it out properly they spend top dollar top notch equipment state of the art equipment they finally start slowly but surely increasing the coverage they're going to be a dangerous player in the market now i said they don't have to be the best they just have to compete but again i think they are the best position across the board Verizon and AT&T investors are going to ask those questions. They're going to say, how are you going to make me money on all this debt? Or how are you going to pay that debt? What is Verizon going to do besides the wireless revenue? Is home internet going to be a big deal for them? That's going to be up to them. They're really going to have to drive this business for revenue and profit growth. And we will see if that happens in the future. AT&T likely has the biggest potential out of anybody because they have the assets, they have the the media, the HBO Max, the 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 fiber. But again, that's not a guarantee. We don't know if they're we don't know how many the, the customers they're upselling from the ones that are joining wireless. So that that remains a mystery, but again, it is good to see that AT&T made the market correction and they're now competing. We will see if Verizon budges and makes a market correction to also compete for for more volume and growth. Because if not, their their trajectory, in my opinion, is going to be on the decline. They're going to continue losing market share. People are starting to catch on that you can go to a track phone, that you can go to a Spectrum Mobile to be still have that Verizon experience for far less. People are going to catch on to these MVNOs. Verizon is going to decline. They're going to decline if they don't make a market correction, in my opinion. So again, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm no financial advisor, not a stockbroker, just giving you guys my opinion. I think T-Mobile overall, again, once again, if we're talking business and how efficiently it's ran and, and if we're talking about history, I think they will be fine. I think they're going to run it just fine. They have the lowest debt with the biggest assets. If they invest steadily where they're at, I think they will be fine. And I think Verizon and AT&T are going to have to answer a lot of questions in the, in, in the coming years and months on how they will overcome the debt load. That you know, And then there's still investments besides that that need to be made to get this into the network to start monetizing the C-band. And you better believe they're going to do home internet on off of C-band. You better believe it. They got to monetize this. They have no other choice at this point. This is a massive investment and they have to make massive profits and revenue to further calm the investors. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Look forward to reading your comments. If you are new to the channel or you have been on the channel and you have not yet liked, shared, subscribed, make sure you do so. Hit the notification bell so you are notified when I do upload content. Make sure to follow the social media outlets for more updates and interactions. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.